Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. I'm super excited to have you all here today. I can't wait to dive into this topic, and it's going to be a really great session. While we give folks just another minute or two to join, I want to make sure that everyone is able to use the question box feature in GoToWebinar. So if you all don't mind typing into that question box and I'll see your responses, let me know where you're calling in from today. I love to see all the folks on the line typing in where they're from. It's just a really great way to kick off these webinars because it's pretty amazing that we can connect folks from all different corners of the world here at this same session so that we can all learn and grow our businesses and learn different digital marketing tactics. So for example, I'm out of Boston, Massachusetts. I love it, I grew up here. Um, it's really great to be kind of in the in-between of all four seasons. So in the winter, I'm out snowboarding. In the summer, I'm at the beach. And let's see, tons of responses already coming in here. So I'm gonna call out some of the folks on the line. We have Gisela from New York, welcome. Nicole from Canada, welcome. Caitlin from Naples, Florida, welcome. We have Curtis from Philly, welcome. Allison from Michigan, welcome. We have some other folks on here. Candace from Des Moines, Iowa, welcome. Kylie from San Francisco, hello. Eric from Indiana, Brianna from Kansas, welcome. Tracy from Port St. Lucie, Florida. She said it is super hot. Oh, I hate the heat as a New Englander, so. For all the folks out there right now that are dealing with the hot summer heat, as we're going to be talking about in this webinar, I feel for you. Uh, we have some folks from, more folks from Canada. Welcome. Christy from Charlotte, North Carolina. Jenna says she loves Boston, but she's from Pennsylvania. Jenna, I'm going to Pennsylvania in August. Very exciting. Never been before. Kimberly from Vancouver. Welcome, welcome. Tons of responses coming in. There's truly folks on this line right now from all different corners of the world. It's pretty amazing. I wish I could call out each and every one of you, but thanks for participating. Again, I'm just really happy that you're all here with me and ready to learn. So let's dive right in. So a couple of housekeeping items for everyone on the call today, just to get us warmed up and get us started here. Please note that the webinar will be recorded. You will get the recording um in your inbox later today so don't worry about taking notes or anything like that i do get a lot of questions coming in about the recording so please know that it will definitely be recorded and you'll be able to access this materials later also please note that all of our webinar recordings are also easily accessible on our youtube channels which i'm going to show how to get there in the next couple of slides but if you ever want to check out past webinars that you missed or want to again see this webinar recording quickly and easily just type in WordStream or local IQ into YouTube and you can navigate over to our webinar videos. You can find our recordings there. Also, the reason why I had you all typing in where you're from today into the question box is because I want you to be able to feel comfortable using the question box feature throughout the webinar. Um, so be sure to save some questions for the Q&A session at the end and throw them in throughout. I'll be able to go back and take a look at them. So again, I'll get all of your um, questions coming into me, so I'll be able to see them. And that's essentially your one single chat feature for today is the question box. There is no chat amongst the audience, but you're still able to use the question box feature. So definitely make sure you toss in your questions there. If you've attended any of our past webinars, you know that we do some really in-depth Q&A sessions. It's kind of like a very one-on-one -on -one experience where I get to answer individual questions, which is really exciting. So looking forward to that. Rachel's from calling in from Hudson, New Hampshire. I grew up right next to that in Litchfield, New Hampshire. So welcome, Rachel. So anyone on the call today, I want to get us all on the same page as to who local IQ is. So as some of you might be already familiar with us. Some of you might already even be working with us, which is wonderful and welcome. Some of you might be totally new to local IQ and that's fine too. Welcome to those folks. And some folks might be familiar or working with our um, sister brands, WordStream and Reach Local. So for everyone on the call today, I wanna to get us on the same page as to who local IQ is. And essentially, we're a fully integrated growth marketing platform that gives you the tools that you need to thrive by combining innovative technology and unparalleled expertise to give you everything you need to prosper and grow. So how exactly do we do that? Well, essentially, a technology is at our core. So we have proprietary technology that makes constant data decisions for your business 
through data that we've gained from over running over 1 million local IQ campaigns. So this is really data and AI capabilities that you can't find anywhere else. And we also provide you with free tools at your fingertips to put more time back into your day so you can focus on other tasks aside from your marketing. And we also have proven results. You know, we've been in the marketing game for over 15 years, which if you think about the age of digital marketing, it's not much older than that, right? So we've been through tons and ebbs and flows through the industry. Over time, we've seen lots of platform changes and handled them with stride and helped other businesses handle them in stride as well. So we've been there, we've done that when it comes to digital marketing and we have the results to prove that, you know, we know what we're doing here. So pretty exciting stuff there. Let's kind of dig into another key thing that I want everyone to know about Local IQ. So something that we're really proud of here is we are a premier partner for all the major digital advertising platforms. So including Google ads, Microsoft ads, Facebook ads, and so on. And this isn't just handed out to any digital marketing platform or agency out there. We do have to meet a rigorous set of requirements, including campaign success for customers. We have to prove that we are growing your campaigns. We also have to demonstrate thought leadership and expertise, and again, meet very rigorous requirements in detail as well. So that's a little bit about us. Um, if you want to learn more about our brands, if you want to learn more about the topics that we cover on these webinars, if you have more questions, want to spend a little bit more time on some of the topics that we cover here, definitely check out the, our websites, the Local IQ and Wordstream blogs to cover all of the topics that we cover in these webinars in depth. So if you need more details, want to just kind of marinate with some of the topics that we talk about, definitely head over to our blog. Also be sure to follow us on social media. You can find Local IQ on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and WordStream on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, we post about any upcoming webinars. If you wanna join more of these in the future, we share out articles that we're publishing, any platform updates advertisers and marketers should be aware of, and so on. So a little bit about me, your webinar host and speaker for today. It's wonderful to meet you all. My name is Susie. I'm a senior content marketing specialist over at Local IQ, where I write educational content on everything under the digital marketing sun, from SEO to PPC to display to email to anything and everything in between. I've written about it, I've created content on it, and I've also worked with businesses on it because how I got into this role was I actually was formerly a digital marketing consultant over at WordStream, where I was working with tons of different businesses of all different shapes and sizes and co coaching them through their day-to-day -day marketing tasks. So I took that real life experience and applied it to the educational content that we create today. Uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter for my business accounts. I do share out a lot of the local IQ news events, articles that I write and so on. Um, a fun fact about me, as I already mentioned, I'm from New England. I'm basically from Boston. I love it here and uh, kind of an unpopular opinion that I have that most people disagree with on these webinars is I hate the heat. Summer is a really tough season for me. And I, I just love the winter time, the snow. I go out snowboarding like every weekend when I'm not working um, in the winter. So really looking forward to next season, that's for sure. All right, so if you've attended any of our past webinars, you know I love to keep people on their toes. I love to warm you all up with a quick little pop quiz. So I want you to type into that question box again, your response to this question. I'll be able to see your answers and I'll call out some of the answers here. But basically, I just want to hear from folks like generally, how is your summer marketing going? Have you found that a certain channel out of these channels listed here, which we'll cover most of today, have you found that they've worked well, haven't worked well? Which one do you feel like brings you the best results? You know, feel free to toss anything in there. I just kind of want to get a conversation going uh, with all of us here. So I'll call it some of the responses here and a ton of responses already coming in. So we have Courtney here, so who had said that she actually relies a lot on social marketing for her summer marketing. That's definitely interesting, definitely a common thing here. We have Allie here. She says that she also relied on SEO, so another organic channel for summer. Very interesting. And then we have a lot of other businesses coming in saying that they use paid avenues. So Steve says he uses Google ads. We have some folks here saying mainly LinkedIn. We also have Tracy here who says her summer marketing is non-existent. And um, some other folks are saying that too. Totally fine. And this is why I do this exercise is because I want you all to understand that everyone's answer to this question is unique, but also at the same time, there's similarities here with the things that folks have struggled with, uh, have struggled with. And so when I 
when I call out these answers, I do that so that you know, one, you're not alone, but also your business is of course unique and your specific results and your goals are gonna be different. So a few other of the responses here, we have some folks saying they're still figuring out their summer marketing, definitely understandable. We have some, Marcella saying she mostly uses social media, definitely understandable. Ali says paid Facebook ads haven't really worked, but Google nor Google paid have ads have, uh, but they've used organic, definitely makes sense. Allison said that she just recently had to restart her Facebook page, and so they're working towards their goals with that. Um, some more folks saying they're new to marketing. Anna has totally new to marketing, some experience in Google and Instagram. Um, Kelly says LinkedIn ads, definitely. Um, Brittany, social media and event marketing, great. So I wish I could call out all your responses and thanks for participating in that. But again, I'm calling these out because I know you can't see the responses, but I want you all to just kind of understand that, you know, I want you to just take a step back and start be thinking about, you know, how things are going for you, how that might compare to other businesses in your industry or just other businesses of your size in general. Um, again, you're not alone, but also you do have unique needs at the end of the day. So a quick agenda of what we're gonna be covering here. We're gonna just talk quickly about the seasonality, the summer season. Um, and then we're gonna to touch on some lead gen and marketing ideas that you can kind of take away with and also some execution tips that apply across the board. And then we'll jump into some thought starters in our Q&A session. So let's quickly take a look at the summer season. Um, now I try not to go super broad here cause I think it's no secret like at the end of the day, you kind of hear the same thing over and over again about summer, right? Like for some businesses, it's great if they're seasonal. For other businesses that are also seasonal, it could not be quite as good. Um, and then for some businesses, they don't really see a difference. And then of course, for certain industries, for example, B2B, uh, in, with the state of the way that folks are often taking vacation during these months and so on, um, those types of industries could also see a slowdown. So let's kind of just touch on why it's really important to lean into your digital marketing and during the summer and why I'm calling out some of these numbers here. So of course, um, we actually do see conversion rates increase um, month over month during peak summer months. So thinking June, June, July, and August, you're gonna see usually a bump in conversion rates. Now that was found across the board, across different industries. So, you know, not a huge bump here, but um, still a little bit of an increase to keep in mind. So if you feel like summer might not be a lucrative time for your business, this stat actually kind of disproves that, right? Because you actually should be seeing an increased conversion rate. And we can kind of talk about how you can increase your conversions uh, later with my ideas. Um, and then also another thing, so there are some pros and there's also some cons, right? So some of the drawbacks, although conversion rates have increased, and this kind of is alluding to a bigger picture theme here, um, website traffic decreases. So how does conversion rate increase if website traffic decreases? That's where we need to start thinking about that cross-channel strategy, right? So maybe folks aren't necessarily uh, converting directly off your website. And that makes sense, right? It's the summertime. I'm not sitting on my computer jumping from website to website. I'm outside. I'm using voice search. I'm calling businesses on the go. I'm doing all sorts of different other ways to interact and have a touch point with the business. So what I'm saying here is that there's so many opportunities for you to drive conversions outside of your website. Now we're gonna talk about both inside and outside of your website conversions today, um, but just something to keep in mind. So, you know, again, approaching that cross channel strategy and then expecting some ebbs and flows in your trends, right? So then you kind of have to be thinking about your priorities for the summer. So if I know that my website traffic is going down, but my conversion rate is going up, well, am I gonna be really bent out of shape about my website traffic where I sacrifice other strategies to grow that in, in lieu of you know conversions or so on. So you kind of have to do that give take or weigh out your options and what's working for you um, during these summer months because the results definitely tend to ebb and flow. And then we also, it's also been found that there's an increase in downtime across um, consumer schedules. So your typical potential customer likely has a little bit more downtime in the summertime, maybe taking vacation with family, maybe having some paid holidays off. Um, we also did see an increase in marketable holidays. So again, like 
kind of leaning into those holidays, you can really run a ton of sales on like July 4th, which we just passed, uh, Labor Day coming up and so on. Um, and we have tons of ideas for those holidays as well on our blog. So we'll move on, but definitely some interesting data points here. So for some ideas that you can get started with, if you are still looking to you know, implement some new summer strategies, kind of give yourself a boost in midway through the season, you can definitely do it with these ideas. If you just are generally trying to drive leads, that can also help too. So I'll try and make this um, broadly enough that it fits you know, many different situations and many different levels of marketing. Because I know there's some folks here that are advanced and some folks here that are totally new. That's totally fine. A lot of the concepts that I'm talking about today apply across the board. So the first thing that we want to lean into during the summertime is a summer email campaign. And the reason why I say that is because most businesses actually do the opposite of this. So if you see in that stat in the bottom right, it's actually that most businesses send five to six percent less emails during the summer months, June, July, August. Um, so what that means for your business is there's definitely an opportunity to stand out. Inboxes are let, much less busy. Um, they're getting you're getting your audience is seeing less emails from your competition. So this is your opportunity to really have some standout email subject lines and try and hone in on some of those customers that have a little bit of a lighter inbox right now. Um, so also make sure that you're able to refresh your email content to fit the summer themes um, and make sure that we're able to, to a, B test different emails and audience segments and more. So let's make sure that we're seeing the slides here. Here we go. So again, you'll be able to see the recording after this. You'll be able to get the slides afterwards as well. Um, but again, so you just want to make sure that you're doing everything you can to make your summer email marketing tightened up to the summertime. Uh, possibly you could be promoting a summer sale or so on um, to also boost email. Obviously, email is super powerful for that typical, um, typical summer sale. Great. So also what we want to be doing is boosting SEO with a summer blog post. So you might be wanting to do some seasonal keyword research. So anything that might be relating more to summer, and then you could create a blog post with those target keywords. You can also leverage AI to create that content, but be cautious with this. So make sure that you're able to, um, you know, check in on the quality of the content that your AI is creating. Um, and make sure that you're always the final person to, or your marketing team or content marketing team are the final folks to sign off on the final content um, to make sure that it's as optimized as possible for um, Google search and other areas. Um, and you can, that can boost your overall website traffic. As you can see from our reporting dashboard over on the left, you can get some pretty in-depth um, chat reports on your website traffic, how it's doing, how it's performing, um, you know, throughout the season and compared to last year. So if you're trying to increase your seasonal marketing year over year, this can be really helpful. You also want to make sure you're summarizing your social presence. So make sure you're scheduling summer theme posts ahead of time. You can use a marketing calendar for that. Our local IQ marketing calendar um, is super um, helpful for that. And then it, you also want to be leveraging seasonal hashtags to try and boost your summer social posts. You can also refresh your display ads during the summertime. So you can make sure that your creative is seasonally relevant. So you might want to just switch out some images for more summary images. Or again, this can apply. A lot of these concepts can apply well into the fall as well. Um, you can try different A-B tests and see which types of creative resonate best with your audience, um, which you're able to view breakdowns of that in our reporting dashboard, which is showcased in that bottom screenshot. Of course, this is from our demo account, so there isn't real examples, but you can click into a, a report just like that. Um, also make sure that you're, if you are going to refresh your display ads, that they're still tightened and aligned with your brand. So make sure that you're clearly conveying your brand in the right ways and making sure that if you do change anything, it still is aligning with your overall business um, 
purpose. And then speaking of purpose, you wanna make sure that your display ads have a clear action that you want folks to take, whether it's just to you know, be more aware of your brand and potentially search for your brand later, or if it's you know, to give them a call or something like that, um, you know, give you a call, make sure that your phone number and so on is very clearly in, um, highlighted in the ad. You also want to make sure that you um, update your search ad strategy for summer. So this is a really great time since um, for many businesses, search can be a little bit slow in the summertime, mostly because, again, people aren't necessarily searching and going directly to your website. They're enjoying all these other touch points that they have with your business outside um, of Google search, for example, during this time of year. So you can take that time um, in that kind of lull to actually audit your account and make sure that you're hitting everything you need to be hitting in the coming season. So a really good exercise for this is the SWOT analysis, which hits on strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for your um, account and for your business. So, you know, you might be checking in on, you know, what's really working well in your Google ads or Microsoft ads you know, platforms? Is it the ad copy? Like you have a really high click-through rate. Okay, so I know my ads are enticing. I'm probably hitting the right keywords, but I have a low conversion rate. Okay, so the weakness could be potentially my conversion tracking. It could be my landing page, you know, things like that. Should I open up or have some more opportunities for other types of conversions to be coming through as well? Or should I hit some you know, potential, consider some potential threats, any other like outranking ads that are hitting my ads on the auction insights report in Google ads and so on. So you also is, it can be really effective to do a custom summer promotion during the season. So kind of, if you feel like things are maybe slowing down for your business during this time of year or so on, um, you can do a custom promotion that has just like a, like maybe like a sweepstakes or a grand prize, you know, something a little bit more enticing. You might need to put a little bit more juice into your um, advertisements, your promotions during this time of year, which is totally fine. Just come up with a really strong, relevant offer, and then you can use that to collect leads through a form. Just make sure that your form is as optimized for leads as possible. So, in this example, if I'm, you know, promoting a huge sale on cooking classes and I have them sign up, I might just ask for their name and their email or something like that. You know, minimizing to just four fields is usually the sweet spot. So, make sure that you have your forms in place and good to go. And then after you collect those leads from a summer promotion or sweepstakes such as this, um, be sure that you have a plan in place to actually nurture those leads. So what's that outreach going to look like afterwards? Where are you going to store those leads? How are you going to organize that data? What are you going to use that data for? Um, and so on. So here's a few takeaway tips um, to execute any sort of summer marketing idea. So you first want to make sure that you have clear goals in place. So regardless of what your goals are this summer and going into the fall or, you know, what channels you decide to lead in, lean in on, you need to have your goals super ironed out. So make sure you walk through a SMART analysis um, exercise. So for your SMART goals, you want to make sure they're specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Basically, what that means is, you know, let's say you are setting a goal of, all right, um, by the end of the summer, I want to, you know, get more Instagram followers. Well, that's not a very clear goal, you know, so you might say, all right, by the end of the summer on this day, August 30th, I want to have a 6% increase in my Instagram followers. And I'm going to do that by, you know, rolling out these three different types of posts on a weekly basis or something like that. That's much more specific much more achievable that way. So your goals can really make or break your summer marketing campaigns. Um, you also wanna be thinking about your long-term goals. Now this can be helpful for folks that don't feel like they have super clear goals for like a shorter time period, like the summertime. So if you wanna set specific goals for summer campaigns, but you're not really sure, you feel like your goals are just kind of like constantly the same, refer back to your long-term goals. And here are some examples. Um, and see, try and narrow in from there what can be achievable during this time in the matter of a few months, you know, to get you closer to these longer term goals. So, for example, you know, 
you want to create a stellar reputation, then maybe you, you know, obviously that's not going to happen by the end of the summer. It's a long term game, right? So, in that case, you might start by refreshing dating your local listings or setting something up to make it easier for customers to leave you reviews. That's one small thing that can, you know, or a couple small things that you can do throughout the season within the matter of a couple of months. And then from there, you can start to build that reputation or build those reviews. But that's going to be a longer term game, but that can lead you down to those shorter term goals for the summer. Um, you also want to make sure your website is buttoned up for your any sort of summer campaign, even though I did mention some stats on how websites during this time of year can um, see a decrease in traffic. If you are running any sort of new campaign or any sort of refresh campaign during summer, odds are you're going to see more traffic from that. So you want your website to be ready to handle that traffic. You can use website graders like I um, pasted into that example here. You just want to make sure that your um, website is also accessible on mobile devices and easy to navigate. So I put up a quick checklist here of a few things you should be looking to include into your website. So not only do you want it to be responsive, you want to be clear on like who your brand is, how people can contact you. You want to make navigation pretty easy, have a menu, have an about us page. And this can also help boost your SEO. You may, might want to target for local keywords. Um, you might want to share any of the latest summer news from your business and so on. So that can definitely be helpful as well. And as on top of that, and this can kind of loop into optimizing your website, not only do you want your website to be like easy to navigate, have really high quality copy and so on, you also want to have high quality photos and images on your website, but also on all of your other channels. So if you notice a lot of the other um, ideas that I had suggested earlier do require some type of creative element, whether it be an image, a video or so on. Um, so you can optimize those ahead of time so that you're not scrambling or end up using the same image over and over again, which I know is a struggle for a lot of growing businesses. Um, so for example, we saw in Google Marketing Live, you can um, leverage AI that's gonna be coming soon for retail businesses and e-commerce businesses, where basically you can use AI to generate really high quality product photos, which is pretty cool, um, but on a smaller, more attainable scale for different, all different businesses. You could just start by like getting more comfortable with Canva and making some seasonally um, charged images in videos in Canva. We also do have a video on how to use Canva. It's on our YouTube, on our blog, so definitely check that out. Um, and then at the end of the day, you also want to be following trends for summer marketing and into fall marketing. So one of the two main trends that we're really seeing across the board right now, and I've alluded to it a little bit, is personalization and cross-channel strategies. So um, where that's coming from is some of these stats here. So when you are touching um, different areas of placements for different customers, if you're hitting customers in different areas in different channels from display to the search results page to you know print media even to phone calls to email, um, and everything in between live chat on your website is another one. These all need to provide like a seamless continuous experience for your customers. Um, that's what the majority of customers are looking for. Also, they do think that most biz most customers are agreeing that most businesses right now aren't really delivering that consistent experience. So if you want to do that, um, you can go ahead and get ahead on that and you might beat out your competitors in that way since the majority of businesses aren't delivering on this right now. Um, so if you get ahead and you hit that a little bit earlier, that'll get you ahead of the game. Um, you can use in-depth reports like this one. I gave an example here um, from our marketing dashboard on social ads activity, for example. You can kind of understand some audience insights so you can personalize your ads, your campaigns a little bit more. So again, in this example, if I see that the majority of my audience is, um, you know, older females, then I might uh, create some type of imagery, for example, on my display ads to go along with those social ads that, you know, speak to them more so, um, and so on. So a few thought starters to just get us thinking before the Q&A session here. So make sure to get more leads now and in the future. The nice thing about seasonal marketing is it's temporary. 
right? So you're gonna have to switch gears and refresh everything again come the fall, come the winter and the holidays, and we have tons of holiday content coming your way very soon as well. Um, but with that in mind, you know, I think a lot of businesses get really bent out of shape out of like one specific campaign or like one specific ad or promotion that they're running that's just like not getting results or something like that, um, which is understandable, right? You have money on the line. I get it. I've, you know, I've been there. But I think knowing that you have that flexibility to switch things up in a shorter period of time for the summer season or whatever season you're in is a really nice reminder and can kind of bring you back to what you can do to pivot uh, to see the results that you want to see, right? Like at the end of the day, not every marketing campaign or promotion is going to be a slam dunk and a hit. If it was, then um, this would be a lot easier and we probably wouldn't be on this webinar right now on right now, but we are um, because, you know, not every marketing campaign or idea is going to work out and that's okay, but you just need to have that open mind to try different strategies and, you know, the strategies that might be tried and true and work for your business um, year round might not be as effective depending on the season that you're in. So again, that's why we're kind of seeing that lull across the board on, during the summer season is we don't always you know, switch gears from our usual campaigns. And that's where we can tend to see um, results slide because you need to be ready to pivot. You need to be flexible and nimble when it comes to your seasonal marketing and your summer marketing. Um, so then along the same lines, you also wanna be ready to be creative. So again, don't be afraid to kind of step outside of the box. Um, you know, things are, your results might ebb and flow a little bit. Your competition is probably going to be fierce because it is kind of a in-between time. You know, a lot of businesses are already starting to prep for, again, like I mentioned, that fall, the winter holiday season. Um, so just be sure to have plenty of backup plans in place. And if you've attended any of our past webinars, that's something that I always recommend. Always, always, always have a backup plan. So you know, don't be afraid to try a new strategy or a new creative or a new test but be prepared for when that potential ad or campaign or whatever it may be, doesn't bring you the results that it will. You know, ideally and hopefully it will, but if it doesn't, you know, what always be thinking ahead of, all right, well, what am I gonna do next if this doesn't work out? You know, what should I try to switch out next? What should I try to tweak next? Um, what kind of results am I expecting? Um, in what time frame? Because again, we're in the middle of summer now, so, again, a lot of marketing can be a long-term game. So just kind of setting your expectations accordingly can set you up for success, right? It's, you know, kind of taking those baby steps. A really common example I use is um, for PPC, right? And let's say you have a limited budget, totally fine, totally normal, um, but your average cost per click for your industry is unfortunately like pretty high. So let's say you have a $10 daily budget, but your average cost per click is $10 then that means you really can only afford realistically like one click a day. And that's fine, right? But that one click better convert. And if it doesn't, you know, also fine. I think what I'm trying to say there is if you set your expectations to, you know, shoot for that one click per day and that'll be your win for now. And then as you collect more clicks and eventually get more conversions, maybe you can, you know, raise your budget or adjust things. Maybe you're going to gain more data in your account and have a little bit of a better quality ad so you can get away with a lower cost per click. You know, there's always trade-offs there. So thinking about those short-term goals again and keeping those within your expectations and within what's realistic and then building up to those longer term goals that you'll be able to hit in the fall and in the winter, I think are really important here. And then I did kind of allude to this already, but pacing yourself as well. So, you know, as marketing changes and the landscape ebbs and flows, you know, show, so should your strategy, you know, don't be afraid to kind of pace yourself out, pre-plan when you can, you know, find out what's a priority. And I did kind of mention that again earlier of like, you know, if you find that you have a decrease in website traffic, but an increase in conversions during the season, you kind of have to weigh out, you know, what's more important to my business. Is it website visits or is it conversions? And you might think I'm crazy for using that example, like what business isn't focused on conversions, but depending on your longer term goals, if it's, you know, to build brand awareness, then website conversions might be a win for you versus, you know, or, or website visits, I meant, but um, I digress. It's pretty, pretty interesting how you can see your marketing ebb and flows. So just, you know, have a little bit of patience. It's a 
I say the hardest part of marketing is patience, you know, um, but just being ready to, you know, tackle those different types of results hands on is really going to make the difference here. So with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into a poll here. So I'm going to launch this poll for everyone to be able to respond to. So I'll just go ahead and select that. And we're gonna put that poll up for the remainder of the webinar. So we're gonna switch over to an audio portion here. Um, so as we have that poll up, I'm gonna switch into the Q&A section. So again, um, we're gonna keep that poll up for the remainder of the webinar. I know I covered a ton, a ton of information in a very short amount of time. So if you feel like you, know, you have more questions or you have a lot of qu questions about your specifics, scenario totally fine i get that you know you, every business is unique as i've said many times so if you want the help to talk to potentially an expert get your individual and questions answered after this definitely um, hit yes on that poll um, again we're going to keep that poll up for the remainder of the webinar it's going to take over your whole screen and basically you can just kind of sit back after you fill out that poll sit back listen uh, to the q a section and there's been tons and tons and tons of questions coming in um, so definitely uh, put your questions in if you haven't already, because I'm going to try and answer as much as I can. We have plenty of time for this Q&A section. Um, so tons of questions coming in, and I'll try and answer as many as I can. As I said, I'm just going to kick things off here with this one quick question from Caitlin. Caitlin asked, is, that, is a giveaway something you can do on Instagram or Facebook? Yes, actually, Instagram and Facebook are one of the more effective channels for um, giveaways, contests, things like that. Um, that's be for two reasons. Well, a few reasons. But what I will say for Instagram and Facebook when it comes to giveaways and contests, the reason why they're really effective is there's tons that you can play with to promote your contest and giveaway, right? You can do organic posts with some images that hype up the giveaway. You can do a lead generation Facebook ad or Instagram ad that, you know, fill out a form as they go. You can do a live story. You can do a countdown to the winner on that live story. Um, you can have people comment in their results. Like there's so much you can play with and you can, you know, drive so much engagement that way, which is usually the main goal for social media. Uh, so when you do roll out a contest or a giveaway, that's kind of like your fast track to you know, just overall more followers, more engagement, um, and a better experience for your users on social media. So I would definitely say that's a great, um, a great tactic to try. Morgan asked a really good question. I think this is a question on a lot of businesses' minds. She asked, what do you recommend for increasing marketing leads with no paid marketing budget? So um, great question. And I, as you know, a consultant at heart, I will say, you know, at the end of the day, I understand that it's not always feasible to just dump more marketing budget into, you know, whatever your tactics are, right? We all have a budget, you know, these marketing camp tactics definitely do cost. So I get it. If you don't have a paid marketing budget, you know, how can you increase leads? There's always always a way you can work around a small budget. I am a firm believer in that. Um, that was something that I've always been by, um, you know, because, you know, there's different ways that you can work around. So in that case, if you don't have a huge paid marketing budget, obviously you're going to be leaning into those free channels. Now, people assume free channels are just like SEO, which I get is a long-term game. I mean, SEO is SEO, um, but it's not just, you know, free rankings on Google with SEO. You can think about your listings is a big part of local SEO that can be a huge lead driver. Um, some other examples, again, organic social media. Um, you can also do you know, some levels of email without necessarily having to put a ton of budget behind it. Um, we have tons of free and low cost ways to promote your business on our blog. So definitely just look that up. Um, but definitely there's ways you can do it. I hope the few that I listed help. Um, you know, I think it's just a, m a matter of optimizing your website to drive as many leads as possible for any visitors that you do get organically. Great questions here. Some folks are asking about the um, 
marketing content calendar. Um, if you just look that up on our website, you can easily download that for free. Um, Caitlin asked another question about um, promotions or sweepstakes, contest giveaways. Can you ask for an email um, as an entry? You can in the form um, as far as comments, um, that is up for debate. Um, so definitely it would just be careful there. You don't want your ad, ad or post to get flagged for spam or anything like that. Um, Brittany asked a really good question. What are the most effective channels during the summer for B2B? Um, so I think, again, having a cross-channel strategy is really where B2B businesses should be leaning into this time of year. We obviously know it's a kind of a slow um, season for B2B businesses, usually, as I mentioned. Lots of you know, you know, your decision makers that you would be targeting are off on you know vacation, focused on other things, focused on the switch of the quarters, you know, whatever it may be. So I would lean into some of those out of box um, potential channels. So one example for B two B that I love to talk about is um, for display. Right, when you're targeting your B two B audience for display ads you're likely trying to get on pages that relate to whatever the product is. But as a working professional myself, that could be marketed by a B2B business, I know that I'm not necessarily looking at blogs all day about, you know, marketing software or whatever it might be. I'm, you know, <laughs> admittedly, you know, looking on the weather site to plan my plans for the weekend. Maybe I'm looking up a recipe to cook dinner tonight, you know, whatever it may be. And a lot of B2B businesses don't think about those types of display placements, but those are often where you'll find, you know, that B2B audience during these times of slow seasons when they're not necessarily always focused on like, you know, talking or reaching out to a business like yours. So I would just leverage as many out of box or, you know, on non-traditional channels and have a cross channel mix during that time of year for B2B. Andrea asks if I have any recommendations for marketing home services. Absolutely, we have a ton of recommendations and ideas all over the Local IQ website. It is one of the industries of many industries that we specialize in. Um, home services definitely has, is a seasonal type of business. It's a seasonal type of industry. So it really is going to come down to which specific sub-industry your home services business is in. But whether it's your slow season or your busy season, I would really just lean into the seasonality um, within your content. So, you know, if I'm a home services business, you know, during the summer, I'm talking about, you know, how to prep, you know, whatever service I offer for the home, you know, how to prep around that, how to prepare for that, how to in improve that during that time of year um, or build anticipation for your busy season. That's just a very quick high level example, but definitely dig into our site there. We have tons of uh, suggestions and ideas. Tons more questions coming in. This is an interesting question from Sean. He asks, should I go after millennials? My core graphic demographic is baby, baby boomers and they are aging out. Um, well, I was thinking about this um, admittedly the other day because sadly, I think we're all feeling like we're aging out of a certain generation at this point. Um, yeah, I definitely think that millennials are gonna be, and Gen X as well, are gonna be like the next major demographics next to boomers. Um, you know, of course, the baby boomer audience is still going to be very lively, I think, for you know years to come. So if you feel like you ran through that audience, and that's kind of what I'm understanding from your question, then yeah, I would try to potentially cross promote to a different type of audience demographic. I would also maybe try a different angle or refresh what I'm currently running for your primary primary audience, which would be the baby boomers. So, and again, I don't love you know the audience names or buckets here, but at the end of the day, um, we know what generations um, you know, work best for our business. Oh, Brianna asked a good question. What are your thoughts on using threads? Do you think many companies are there already? So 
keep your eyes peeled because I'm actually writing an article on threads um, going live on the blog on the local IQ blog next week. Um, and it's going to be pretty a pretty quick overview. Um, so far, what we found for threads is there's a little bit of a mixed appeal to the general user base for Instagram um, that are using this additional feature, this additional platform. Um, it's, we found that a lot of folks are signing up and then shortly after closing their account. Um, so the user base and how effective it is isn't super clear yet, of course, because it's so new. Um, but I do think businesses are on there. I'm kind of a believer in the fact that like the more channels and the more platforms your business are, is on, if you're like keeping it tightened up, keeping it branded, you know, at least keeping up with it, keeping it up to date, it really cannot hurt. If it doesn't cost your business money and your business isn't on that platform, you know, like kind of a, in my head, I'm, I often think, you know, what's stopping you? Maybe your target audience isn't frequently on that platform yet, but, you know, I think the more you can get your business out there online, the better, right? So if you're not on like Instagram or threads or LinkedIn or Twitter and you feel like it's not effective, that's fine. I'm not saying you need to, you know, go full throttle on those channels with your business, but I'm just saying, you know, set up a profile so that people, if they're looking for your business on there, they can find you. You know, it doesn't have to be a super active profile. Of course, that's ideal for like your money making channels. But if it's just kind of like a passive channel that you want to try out, you know, start small. I know that social media management takes a long time. Um, so you don't have to put in a ton of time at first as you try it out. Tons more questions coming in. Um, I wish I had time to answer them all. Of course, as you all can tell, I could talk about marketing all day. Um, I love these questions. So thank you all so much for joining. If you have more questions, like I said, definitely make sure that you hit yes on that poll um, to get your questions answered there. Um, but with that said, since I went through a lot of the major questions here, I'm going to close out the webinar. Thank you all so much for joining. Keep your eyes peeled. Um, we do these webinars monthly. Um, so be sure to stay on the lookout for our next upcoming webinar in August. And thanks again. The materials, the slides will be in your inbox later. You'll see the recording in your inbox and on our YouTube channels as well. Our past webinar recordings on there too. And I can't wait to see you all at the next webinar. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.